or location. And the term here, arva, simply means on the other side. Why is that so important? Well, before the children of Israel were called B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, they were called the Hebrews. What does that mean? It means those that crossed over, those that came from another place but came into the land of Canaan. So what he's talking about here, and it's very, very perceptive, he's saying and he positioned all of his work, this immersion and calling people to repentance and speaking about the kingdom of God, this all took place where? At a place called Beth Avara, which means the place of crossing over. And most New Testament scholars that understand the Hebrew language is speaking about Messiah being the means for crossing what? Crossing into the kingdom of God. So I want you to understand how important what John is teaching, how important it is theologically for us understanding the revelation of God and the purposes of God, which is to create a kingdom people for him self so he says these things were done in in bet avara it all happened on the other side of the jordan where john was baptizing baptizing verse 29 now in verse 29 we're going to see a little bit more concerning the work of john so look at that it says on the next day john saw yeshua coming to him and he says behold the Lamb of God. Now, don't miss that term, the Lamb of God, because it's the unique word for lamb. This word always speaks of a Passover lamb in the biblical language. So we're not just speaking about a lamb as a sacrifice, just any sacrifice, but we're talking about a Passover sacrifice. Why is that so important? Because Passover, and you've heard me say this a million times, Passover is related to redemption. And redemption is God calling a people, choosing a people, purchasing a people for himself. And what is he doing this for? Ultimately, he's purchasing a kingdom people. And what John is trying to tell us is the basis for this, how this all comes about is through a work of the Lamb. So once again, verse 29. And on the next day, John was, was looking, and he saw Yeshua coming to him, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And what does the Lamb of God do? Well, redemption is all about removing the sins of the world, but it uses a word. Most Bibles say, take. That he takes the sins of the world. And that's fine. But literally, it's not the word taking, but it's the word lifting up. Why is that so important? Because this word for lifting up is also related to Messiah. Why? Well, if you look sometime, for example, in the prophecy of Ezekiel, one of the ways that Messiah is spoken of is a nasi. Today, the term nasi is, in Hebrew, we would say nasi means president. It means one that is lifted, lifted up. Now, most people understand that this is related to how he took away sin, that he was lifted up on that cross. Another way to understand this is found in Psalm 32, where David is talking, talking about the one who is blessed because his sins have been lifted from him, had been removed. So over and over, this word is used in the sense of redemption and uniquely related to who? Messiah Yeshua. So once again, it says, he takes away the sins, the sins of who? Just the elect? No. When we look here, it says, the sins of the world. And what John and all the writers of the New Testament want us to understand is that the work of Messiah was sufficient he did it once and for all and it has the potential to save all people not just some there is not a concept biblically speaking of a limited atonement now because certain people will reject this they will not believe they will ignore god's provision they won't be part of the kingdom 
But when we look at the Word of God, we see that the work of God is rich. It is abundance. It is for the salvation of the world, not just some unique group. So when we look at this passage, it says, the sins of the world, excuse me, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, it says, this one is the one whom I am speaking. For this one, he says, is, is coming after me, who? A man. But it says, this one is preferred to me. Why? Well, this is the third time this word just stands out. And it's amazing to me. I mean, three times we see John saying this same phrase. There's one coming after me. He is preferred to me. And then this word, Gigonin. What does it mean? The one who was and is and forever will be. So we see it relating to the divinity. And what's unique here? Well, there's a change. Because when he speaks about this one, in the first part of the verse, he uses the term man. There's coming after me a man who is preferred to me. But then he tells us that this man is who? The one who is eternal, who was and is and forever will be. So it's speaking about his divinity. What is the Gospel of John speaking about? The fact that our Messiah, that he is fully man and he's fully God. He is God with us. And the reason why God became man is in order to redeem man. There was no other way. What does the scripture say? God looked to see if there would be anyone to help, and there wasn't. So God became Savior, and that is Messiah Yeshua. Well, once again, we've come to the time of our end, and we'll continue next week when we press on into the rich revelation that is found in the Gospel of John and John chapter 1.